Today we're doing some winter maintenance on my mountain bike. We'll be performing a full rebuild on the fork, servicing the lowers, air spring, and damper. This is what RockShox calls the 200 hour service. The fork is a RockShox pike from the A2 generation, meaning that it is from roughly 2016. Being a trail fork, this example has 150 millimeters of travel. This fork is equipped with a solo air spring and charger damper which was RockShox's first sealed and bled cartridge damper. This style damper is a significant improvement over the emulsion style motion control damper, where oil mixes with air as the fork compresses. In the charger, a rubber diaphragm expands as the fork compresses. Because there is no air in the system, foaming of the suspension oil is reduced. This results in more consistent performance, especially in cases where the fork is compressing repeatedly like on a rough trail or in a rock garden. Unfortunately, as this was RockShox's first iteration of this style damper, they're prone to leaking, which can make the damper difficult or impossible to bleed properly. I believe they refer to this as foreshadowing. Anyways, we'll start the service by removing the fork from the bike and quickly cleaning everything up. All right, I just did a quick cleanup all around the fork. Some of the areas like around these wiper seals, I did a quick clean of, but I'll really come back to that later after we drop the lowers. It'll be a lot easier to clean some of the really detailed parts. The first step is to release the air pressure to just pop off this top cap cover and then use something like a hex wrench or a pick to depress the valve in here. You wanna let out the air somewhat gradually. If you do it too quick, you can uh, trap air inside the negative air chamber. So we're gonna start working toward pulling the lowers from the fork. First step is to remove this rebound adjuster knob. Next, we have to remove these two lower bolts. These each have a five millimeter hex fitting, and we're not gonna remove these all the way, just a couple of turns. Once they're out a couple of turns, we're gonna hit them with a hammer to press them in. Each side of the fork has a, a shaft coming down from it that's press fit into the bottom of this lower housing. So we're gonna hit these bolts with a hammer to dislodge that press fit and then we'll be able to pull the lower right off. Once you hit in these bolts, you can go ahead and fully remove them. Now that we have those bolts removed, it should be able to just pull the lowers right off. While that drains out, I'll take the opportunity to warn you that suspension oil is nasty smelling stuff. If you've ever smelled gear oil, you'll know what I'm talking about. The next thing we're gonna be working on is those lowers. So I'm gonna take the rest of this fork off of here and then throw the lowers in the stand and get started on that. At this point, my microphone died and I ended up losing audio for a couple of clips. What I'm doing here is removing the wiper seals from the lower. RockShox recommends using a downhill tire lever for this process. And as you can see, I'm still really struggling, even with the proper tool for the job. Technically, I'm supposed to be resting the lower on a table or some kind of surface like that. So potentially that would give me the additional support that I need to uh, make this task a little bit easier. These are the old foam rings that came out of the bike. To say they are in rough shape is probably understating it. For reference, here are the new foam rings. Notice that I just had to adjust my exposure in order to show them properly. I actually did the 50 hour service on this fork last winter and had to reinstall these old rings since replacements don't come with the kit for that service. Being able to get in and replace them was one of the main reasons I was looking forward to doing this service. 
We've got to soak the foam rings in suspension oil before they go into the lowers. We're going to be using RockShox 0W30. So you just need a thin layer in there and then you can mix around the rings to make sure everything gets covered. Now just placing the foam rings into the lowers and the new wiper seals. So that's it for servicing the lowers on this fork. We cleaned everything up, put in new wiper seals and new foam rings, and then we'll put some new oil in here when we put everything back together. The next thing to do is the air spring service. We've got the crown assembly in the stand. We're going to start working on the air spring. First, we're going to pull this top cap off. whiff of that suspension oil that's nice um, anyways you may or may not have bottom out tokens on your fork these are used to make the fork more progressive so essentially as you compress the fork the more tokens you have in here the quicker the rebounding force will begin to act so if you put in more tokens you essentially get more protection against bottoming out now we're going to replace the O-ring here and give this a general cleanup. All right, there we go. We got the top cap cleaned up and a new O-ring installed. So this next step is kind of interesting. We're here on the bottom of the fork. We have to remove this seal head. The way that you do that is use a flathead screwdriver, push this seal head in. There's no air pressure holding it. Then you have to rotate this tab underneath the snap ring so that you can actually use snap ring pliers to pull that out. That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Of course, I'm not going to be doing this the right way, but it'll work. So you should probably wear safety glasses if you're going to do it this way. And my face is out of the frame, so of course I'm wearing safety glasses. All right, now we're able to just pull the seal head right out. That can help to screw back in this bottom bolt to give yourself something to pull on. Looks like this is going to come out. Okay, without it is what I was going to say, but I spoke too soon. Come on. Oh, there we go. Almost punched the camera. We've got the air shaft assembly on the workbench. We're going to replace a couple parts. We have a new seal head assembly, wave spring, and seal for the piston. So we're gonna pull off the old parts that we're replacing, clean everything up, and then put the new parts on. Just take a picture so I remember what order it goes back on in. Reinstall the retaining clip. This might take a few tries. Push the seal head into the tube a little bit to find the groove where the clip sits. Maybe that's it. Let's see. It's not in there quite yet, but I think maybe we can maneuver it a little bit to get the ring to sit properly. There we go. Just gonna double check that it's sitting in its groove. Use the pliers to 
move it around a little bit, make sure it's sitting in the groove. So yeah, that is in there properly. Last thing on the air spring side is to reinstall the top cap. Torque on this bolt is 28 Newton meters. I don't have my torque wrench here that can measure that high. This goes up to 23 Newton meters, so we're going to do that and then tighten it a little bit more by hand. So I'm going to get started on the damper service. First step is turn both compression knobs to fully open. This will allow the damper to be bled most effectively. So just turning the low speed compression all the way counterclockwise. And then for regular compression, I already have this all the way open, so we can leave it there. Next, remove the low speed compression knob. Just clean before we remove the compression knob. Remove the compression knob. That was already loose. Just give this top cap area a quick clean. All right, now we'll remove the top cap. A very shallow engagement here, so we'll just have to be careful. It was also not tight at all. We'll just remove the damper assembly. Oh, there's a hair in there. That makes sense. There's a good amount of grease on this assembly, so I'm just going to give it all a clean, and then we're going to replace the top cap o-ring. I want to take a second to point out the grease covering the bladder and the surrounding areas of this damper cartridge. I didn't know at the time, but there's nothing in the service instructions about applying grease to this component. This will tie in with one of the other problems that I've run into in this service, so we'll be coming back to it. But for now, I just wanted to point it out. Anyways, on to cleaning the cartridge. Now for the O-ring replacement. So we've got the damper assembly in the work stand. We're going to get started getting the seal head removed. 21 on the flats, 23 on the seal head. I'm going to use the box end of this wrench just because the fit is a little bit sloppy here. So now we can remove the rebound assembly. I'm just going to put a rag around the cartridge. Some suspension oil is going to overflow here. I will pour out the old suspension fluid. The old oil doesn't really look bad at all. Still a good idea just to make sure we're doing everything thoroughly to replace this and re-bleed the damper. So now we're going to work on this rebound assembly. First thing, we're going to remove the seal head and the glide ring since we're going to be replacing those parts. And then we'll give everything that's staying a good clean. We'll install the new glide ring. And the new seal head. For this, again, we're just going to be applying SRAM butter to the new seals. I can't really tell if there's any seals on the inside bore of the seal head, so I'm just going to put a little bit of SRAM butter around the damper shaft, and that way anything that needs it will naturally pick up some of that grease as I slide on the new seal head. So at this point we could adjust our rebound tune if we wanted to. What this does is if you are finding that your ideal settings for the damper are too close to either the firmer or the softer side, you can change the range of settings covered by the adjustments on the bike. And the way that's done is you would remove this nut at the top of the damper here, and then there's a selection of shims underneath that nut. And by changing the order and choice of shims that you install, 
you can modify the rebound tune that you have. I'm personally happy with the way that this fork rides now, so I'm going to leave it as is. But if changing that tune is something that you wanted to do, now would be the time to do that. So RockShox recommends now that you use isopropyl alcohol to clean the inside of the cartridge tube. They then recommend that you use compressed air to ensure the insides of the tube are completely dry because any moisture left over can cause the bladder to crack. I don't have access to compressed air and I'm not terribly worried about it given that the oil that came out of here looked as clean as it did. But just to give myself a little bit extra peace of mind, what I'm going to do instead is just do a quick flush with the suspension oil to get any contaminants that might be in there out. Stir everything around and then just go ahead and pour that out. Fill the cartridge tube entirely with suspension oil. This is RockShox three weight oil. Now we have to make sure that the damper is fully in the open position, two and a half millimeter hex. So this is essentially acting how your rebound adjuster knob would once the fork is reassembled. Just turn it counterclockwise until it stops. Cloth around the cartridge tube to catch any oil that overflows. Reinstall the rebound assembly. And then tightening the seal head on is the same thing as taking it off. 21 on the flats of the cartridge, 23 on the seal head. Final torque is 80 to 90 inch pounds by my wrench set to 85. Next step is to bleed the damper. Remove this retaining ring from the low speed compression adjuster if we can. Need and lowest pliers to remove the compression adjuster itself. There we go. Now we've got to cycle the damper shaft a few times to pre-bleed air from the system. I'm going to install the bottom bolt back in, at least loosely, to give myself something better to pull on. I'm also going to use a rag on the top of this damper just to prevent any oil from jetting out of here. You want to do this pretty slowly. If you go too fast, you can eject oil out of the top. If you're wondering, I have no idea exactly how many times a few is. I also don't know exactly how fast too fast is. Now we have to prepare the syringe for the bleed. So this is the RockShox charger syringe. It comes with this fitting for the syringe that will thread into the damper top cap. And that will allow us to effectively pull a vacuum and pressurize the damper, which is what we need to do in order to perform the bleed. So we'll thread on this fitting. Again, we're using three weight RockShox suspension oil. The service manual says to fill the syringe halfway. The bleed process consists of repeatedly pressurizing the damper to dislodge air and pulling a vacuum to purge air from the system. To pressurize the damper, the syringe plunger is depressed while the damper shaft is pulled to the fully extended position. Continuing to depress the plunger once the shaft is fully extended pressurizes the system. To pull a vacuum, the damper shaft is compressed while pulling up on the syringe plunger. Continuing to pull up on the plunger once the shaft is fully compressed puts the system into a vacuum. Air will be seen flowing out of the damper while the vacuum is being pulled, which can be used to gauge how much air remains in the system. The bleed cycle is repeated until no air remains. To test the bleed, the damper can be reassembled and put into the lock position with the shaft fully extended. If the shaft can be compressed less than 2 millimeters, the bleed was successful.
Unfortunately, even after spending hours bleeding my system, I continued to see air flowing from the damper. I concluded that there must be a leak somewhere. As I mentioned, this damper was the first of its type released by RockShox. Some searching on forums revealed that early versions shipped with a poorly designed damper seal head which allowed air leakage. After continued research, however, I found that my damper featured an updated version of the seal head which was not as prone to leaking. The other likely place for a leak is the bladder. Remember the grease that I found covering the bladder when I removed the damper? Since the service procedure makes no mention of greasing this component, I'm guessing that it was applied by whoever serviced this fork for the previous owner in order to prevent air leakage either through a crack in the bladder itself or in the interface between the bladder and the coupler attaching it to the cartridge tube. While my bleed technically failed the bleed test previously mentioned, compressing the shaft in the locked position was incredibly difficult, especially in comparison to the open position. Based on this, I decided to proceed with reassembling the fork and testing out performance on the bike and on the trail. So we'll unthread the syringe here, keeping a rag nearby in case any oil should spill while we're taking this off. This could be under a little bit of pressure still, so the rag is just an extra precaution. Next, we'll reinstall the low speed adjuster knob. There's a bunch of detente on the bore where this sits, and then there's this ball on the adjuster knob. And we're going to insert the knob to the bore and then slowly rotate it until the ball sits into one of those cutouts. Last but not least, reinstall the retaining ring. All right, I think that's in. I'll clean up the threads and inside of the damper tube. With the damper cleaned up and in the fully open position, we'll insert it into the upper. The compression mode adjuster goes on with the long tab facing the front of the crown. Turn clockwise until the first detente. Hold the knob while tightening the retaining nut. Turn the knob clockwise until it stops. Low speed adjuster knob. We're going to start reinstalling the lowers. Remove the old sag indicator ring. Clean everything. New sag indicator. Ram butter on the wiper seals. Reinstall the lowers. Leave the lowers a little bit below where they begin to contact the damper and air spring shafts as we'll be injecting oil into the lowers. So we have the fork tilted upward like this for injection of the oil into the lowers. We're using RockShox 0W30 and each leg gets 10 milliliters. Now we'll slide the lowers on until the spring and damper shafts are visible through the holes in the lowers. And that will allow us to thread the lower bolts on. So these are the two lower bolts. I have new crush washers installed on both. The damper side gets this bolt with the shoulder and the o-ring. 
and the spring side gets this bolt. We'll start both of these by hand. Install the rebound adjuster knob. Tighten the set screw. This technically has a torque of, of 10 inch pounds. I don't have anything that measures torque that low, so I just tighten it loosely by hand with a hex wrench and call that good. All that's left to do at this point is add air to the shock and reinstall on the bike. Time will tell whether the issues with the bleed will cause any trouble, but for now, the fork is fully refreshed and should be ready for another 200 hours of riding.